We acknowledge and respect the first humans of the unceded land we call San Francisco, the Ramaito Shaloni. We condemn the genocide of these and other tribes across the Western Hemisphere. We honor their legacy and history, and we support rematriation and sovereignty efforts. I would say after about a decade in, in the corporate world, I needed a break. Um, yeah. And in the back of my head, for the like going on 15, 20 years, I thought, God, you know, one of these days I'm gonna, I'm gonna open my own bar. That was John Ordonia, co-owner of Mini Bar. I'm Jeff Hunt, and this is Storied San Francisco a podcast celebrating the people and places that make this city so special. Welcome to part one of our last episode of season five. You'll get to know John, who was born and raised and still lives in the city. You'll hear all about John's childhood, his early adulthood, jobs he had, and how he decided to open a bar, which we'll get more into in part two Thursday. Here's John. Let me start by saying I was born and raised in San Francisco. I, I've pretty much lived here all my life, except for perhaps, perhaps, ooh, a very long summer in the Philippines many years ago. Okay. Um, our summer or their summer? Uh, our Are they summer. different? Our summer. Oh, our summer. Yes. Winter. Uh, winter yeah. down there. Yes. Winter. Yeah. Uh, rainy season. There's no right. winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I was um, yeah I was born down the street from any bar actually. So I oh. was born at Kaiser, at um, in, in my mother's maternity ward. So she was one of the head nurses at the maternity ward at Kaiser. And, and when um, she and my father immigrated here uh, with my two older brothers, she soon discovered she was pregnant with child again um surprise you said two and, brothers uh two older so, brothers so, so they, i'm the youngest they think they're just coming over with two and then it's like oh yeah and kind of well you know my, the they're, 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 they were pretty young you know my my um my second oldest brother at the time was maybe like nine or ten months old so he was a oh. was a baby and 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 my oldest brother was three-ish four-ish okay yeah yeah so i don't i don't think they knew you know Right side up, upside down. Yeah. You know, what was going on? Catholic. Uh, very. Yeah. I, you know, I, same uh, understatement. Like, like right. uber Catholic, right, if right, you will. Right. So you know, that being said, I, I was I was um, I was born at Kaiser. Um, and where your mom worked, you said. Where my mom worked, okay. where she was the uh, one of the head nurses at the maternity ward, and she was an immigrant nurse, so she was recruited from the Philippines. Mm. Uh, she was. They were both educated here for a bit, went back to the Philippines, reunited, oh. um, married. Here, as in San Francisco or U.S. Uh, in the U.S. Okay. So my father uh, was sent here by the military. He's a military guy, mm -hmm. and went to school down in San Diego for a bit. Okay. This was back in the 50s, I think. Okay. Maybe late 50s, early 60s. My mother uh, went to nursing school, of all places, in Toledo, Ohio. That is, of um, all places. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it, like, r from the Philippines to Toledo, Ohio, and the, there's a photo of my mother sitting around a campfire, and, and it's snowing, and she's, she's the only minority nurse in, in this group of other nurses like who were as white around as her. the snow that's yeah, falling. Well, yeah definitely definitely <laughs> yeah. and and the look on her face was like what am i doing here? right yeah. so so that's a that's a photo that that um always pops up in my mind when i think of my mother coming here for for her nursing school adventure so both will. of them had been to the u.s and spent significant time but then they decided to immigrate to San Francisco they did so oh, because your mom was yeah my, my recruited, yeah my mother said, okay. was so she was okay. part of the perhaps I think the first wave of um, Filipina nurses that um, that migrated to the US so there, there was a shortage wow. of nurses at the time which right. I think there still is now yeah so so you see a lot of nurses 
you know, from from the Philippines. For sure. Right, yeah. Uh, in the U.S. And, and so she was part of that. I think it was part of the first wave. Okay, yeah. wow. Yeah. Do you want to date yourself at all? Do I want to date? I'm old. Okay. I'm, old. I'm gen, let me, I'll, I'm Gen X. Same. And, 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 prou- oh, yeah. and proud of it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But we're also not super loud and annoying about it. Like, no, I, know, I don't know if, it, I, you mean about being Gen X? Right, right. We're yeah. just like, yeah, we're Gen X. Like, we've sure. been running the show for sure, quite a right. while now. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, I carry my first year of, of Gen X bitterness. I don't know. Oh, I mean, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but not really, you know, I, I, we can get into it later and, 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 uh, and, and, and talk about that. But, but back to the point, yes, I, I'm, I was born and raised pretty much in this neighborhood. I would say the, the other neighborhood that I identify with is probably the inner Richmond. Inner Richmond. Yeah. Yeah. I went to elementary school there. Okay. Then I went to, the, you know, going back to being Catholic. Yes. At, uh, at Star of the Sea on, uh, oh, yeah. on Geary Street. Yeah. And then I went to uh, Sacred Heart. Okay. Uh, I was part of... This is how you can find out how old I am. Um, I was the last all-male oh. um, class that graduated from Sacred Heart. So okay. now it's co-ed. Yeah. Um, but... What was, was the girls' school? Cathedral. The, cathedral, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they, they, they combined, and, right. and now they're Cathedral Sacred Heart. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, so grown up in the 70s and 80s? <laughs> You're really trying to get, you know. Yes, okay. I, I, will, also, I will say that, and you know, incredibly interesting time. I may have vivid memories from some of the stuff that was going on. That's Saturday. what I want to get into, like San Francisco. <laughs> oh, then, definitely. Because definitely, not I mean, everyone listening knows what it was like. Yeah, oh, and I was, don't because I didn't live here then. But, sure. Yeah, so. it was. Uh, it was nuts. Sometimes I think back, and I and I wonder. What my parents thought. I mean, here they immigrated to a city that was just in chaos. I mean, we think San Francisco's in chaos now, to an extent, you know, perhaps it is, but different. But, kind but, of. Yeah, but back then, I mean, you had the influx of, of you know, the hippies and, and, and that culture, and then you had, um, you know, millionaire, billionaire heiress is getting kidnapped <laughs> by, by urban gorillas, gun toting. Um, or, yeah, got, and, you know, for me, so for this, the funny story I tell, well, I don't know if it's funny, but is, so Patty Hearst was kidnapped around the same time, I think, that the Planet of the Apes was released. Sounds about right. Right. Yeah. And so on the news as, as a very, very small child, and my parents were addicted to, to watching the news, and perhaps that's why, you know, my, my other job has always been in, in PR and mm. communications. I just thought about that. Mm-hmm. I just made that connection. Mm-hmm. Revelations, but, right here. <laughs> <right>. Story to <laughs> say. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So, so when Patty Hearst was kidnapped, it was all over the news every single day, mm-hmm. and you know the headline was, you know, heiress kidnapped by urban gorillas, and then you have Planet of the Apes come <laughs> out, and you know, I was trying to figure out what was going on. Yeah. And you know, my my parents being, <laughs> being. The, the type of parents that they were to not explain things to you, but to mm. scare you into behaving, mm-hmm. would say, yeah, but if you don't behave, the urban gorillas are going to oh, come God. for you. And, you know, when you, when you watch the news about the SLA and, 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 and them robbing banks and, and Patty Hearst becoming part of that and you know, these people having submachine guns, and, and you couldn't really see what they looked like because they were covered and they were wearing masks. Mm-hmm. You know, similar to kind of the garb that they wore in um, Planet of the Apes. So, you know, as a however old I was, you know, it was just a scary time. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so, so really interesting time. Yeah, you had, you had that. You had, you had people drinking, you know, Kool Aid in Guyana. Yes. Um, I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you had congressmen being shot down there. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Crazy times. And crazy their congregation. Times. Which was like vaguely Christian was run out of a synagogue. Am I wrong about that? It was run out on um, the post a, office. The, the post office, yeah. But on, it was uh, a synagogue. Gary Am I right? Uh, are you know, tell you the truth, that's a uh, that's next a to the film question. question. I don't know. Yes, I think next to the I believe the post office. Well, yeah. I at least will go on record. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> the whole thing just Perhaps. sounds. I'm like, yeah, today is wacky, but also 
45-ish years ago was yeah, 70s completely were upside down. Kind of, kind of nuts, you know, like shootings at City Hall, the mayor being shot, you know. Climbing through windows. Know, to You know, the gays rioting. Yeah. You know, white night riots. Yeah. You know, my father, my father worked the graveyard shift way back when, and uh, my mother did not want him to go to work that night because mm. he, he would take the bus. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the whole... That whole area was erupting, yeah. and it was, yeah, it was, you know, crazy times. So let's just say you're old enough to actually remember all this that you're talking about. I'll give you that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is all we're talking like late-ish seventies. Uh, yeah. So some of that was was probably early to mid, and then yeah, you go into late seventies. And besides the news, what kind of things were you into as a kid in San Francisco? So. You know, going back... Or I, were you into the... You you said you're now, but like... I don't know. What were you into as a kid? So as a kid... You know, several things. Uh, well, let me... I'll, I'll go back. and I don't want... <laughs> I don't want this to be the theme of, of, <laughs> of the interview. But again, I, I was raised in a very... Um, Kind of close knit, tight Catholic community. Okay. Right? So, so I went to Star of the Sea. I went to Sacred Heart, and then I also went to USF. Okay. Right. So, you know, I did the hat trick in terms of Catholic education. Yep. Um, the Holy Trinity. Right. I'll say it. Right. <laughs> um, and you know, within that, I I I played sports. You know, mm-hmm. CYO. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, basketball and baseball, mainly basketball mm-hmm. when I was. When I was um, in in elementary uh, school, which which the elementary school I went to went from K to eight, um, I I did second grade to eighth grade at Star of the Sea, and then I also um, what position in baseball? Sorry, I'm sorry. I, I love baseball. So what position? You know, I never really loved baseball, I, but because it was too boring for me. But but oh. when I when I played, it was any anything from shortstop to first base to left field. Okay, right. Um, and. I guess I was okay because I was always asked to play on, like the, 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 A teams or the better yeah. teams and and but I just I just really, and I did but I just couldn't really get into it. There wasn't enough action in it for me. So mm-hmm. so basketball was my sport and then boxing also as a child was my okay. sport. So my father, um, boxed a little bit in the Navy when he was in the Philippines mm-hmm. and and so we would always watch the fights. With um, with my dad, my oldest brother, and I, um, and one day I asked him if if you know he thought it was a good idea um, if if we learned how to box, and, and he thought that was a great idea. So so <laughs> he took us uh, well, he took me first to a gym called Newman's Gym in the Tenderloin, okay, which was um, on Leavenworth and Turk, and. Drove me down there, and, and we walked into the gym, and I thought, oh, my God, this is amazing. Um, I'm going to be just like Rocky. Yeah, and, and, I was and, just going to uh, bring up Rocky. You know, it, 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 it was actually a pretty nice gym. It, it, it had two rings, skylights over them, um, you know, open, so the sun would shine through, and it had, had bleachers and bags lined up, you know, heavy bags and, and um, double-end bags and speed bags. So it was really cool. Um, and, and that's action. And and yes, basketball and <laughs> boxing are almost very action almost, filled. Almost too much action <laughs> right. uh, when, when I first, when I started to really get into it. But um, but yeah, the the second day, I and that was just you know going down there and, and signing up and with a trainer and and um, and and figuring out how it worked. And, and so the next day when I was ready to go, I went to my dad and said I'm, I'm ready to go to the gym got my bag and he said great and he gave me whatever it was for bus fare back then a dime the or, quarter yeah yeah, yeah you know and, and 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 you know I looked at him and I and I said well aren't you going to drive me because it was in the tender line. right and I was I think 11 or 12 at the time so I'm thinking I don't to take the bus to the tender <laughs> line and walk through all of that yeah. But but he uh, no he said hey you're taking the bus. I'll see you in a couple hours. Was you that know, the have first fun. time you rode the bus? No, I used okay. to take we used to take the bus all the time, but but uh, we we wouldn't take the bus that way. Yeah, right. <laughs> or we would take the bus downtown sometimes, but we wouldn't stop. It goes through. <laughs> yes, right. just keep going. Yeah. So yeah. 
So, you know, years later I found out that, yes, my, my, my dad thought it was a great idea to, to have us learn how to box, and whether we learned or not, that's, that's a whole other conversation. But of, of equal importance, he thought, I want my kids to learn how to carry and conduct themselves, yep. you know, in the city no matter where they are. Right. Um, and so after, really after a week taking the bus to the boxing gym, I was, I was fine. But at the time, that was in the 80s, 80s or late 70s. And I think it was, yeah, perhaps, perhaps uh, early 80s. And it, it was a time of, of transition for the ten. Well, I don't know if you call it transition, but, you know, there was a, a really diverse mix of people. So... Mm-hmm. You know, Vietnamese and Cambodian immigrants were mm-hmm. coming in, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, from post-conflict, right? Yeah, right, right. And uh, and so mixed with everything else that mm. makes up the tenderloin. <laughs> so I remember, you know, in my first week, there were like chickens flying out of windows, and you know, uh, toddlers chasing after them, you know, and grandmothers yelling, you know, at those toddlers to get the chicken, and mm-hmm. prostitutes and pimps and know it what sounds look great like, you know sign regular. me up it you're right it's amazing right? but 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 after about a week right i knew some of the prostitutes they knew me right you know and yeah. and, and um i the faces became familiar mm-hmm. and, and i knew how to conduct myself and um it was probably a very brilliant plan that it's my a little bit had. hard knocks yeah school of hard knocks yeah i love it yeah. thanks thanks dad Right? Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, okay. my, th- there was always a reason. There was always a, some thinking behind my father's decisions. And, and, uh, and that was, I, in retrospect, a very good decision. Method to yeah. the madness. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you said you went to USF. I went to USF. That was, yeah. um, did you, like, do f- four years or whatever, you know? I did, uh, you know, truth be told, I spent some time at City College at Harvard on the Hill. Right and, on. And, uh... And then I went to USF, and I, 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 um, I went to City College because I paid my way through college on my own, right? And and uh, and USF was just—I mean, still expensive, but it was, yeah. you know, it was, it was very expensive back then as well. So right. I did what I do—about two and a half years at USF. Okay, you yeah. said paid your way, so you must have had job. I did. A so job I worked, or jobs. I, yeah, I worked full time while I was carrying a full load. So it was, was it was tricky. Uh, so I started my career in um, in apparel, in uh, fashion apparel. So it was with a company called Esprit. Oh, I've heard yeah. of them. Which uh, which a lot of people don't don't really remember, but it was um, it was Gen Xers remember. Esprit. Yeah, right. I mean, it was it was a it was a very well known, very popular global lifestyle brand that was founded in San Francisco, right? Yeah. Yep. Susie, Doug Tompkins, Doug, who had founded North Face beforehand and, uh, and, uh, Susie, uh, Tompkins, who I still run into every now and then. It's rad. It's it's odd. Yeah. And it's really cool when I run into her, she kind of pinches my cheek and, Mm -hmm. you know, asks me, she still thinks I'm the kid who (laughs) answered the phones at, you know, the front desk for her because that's well, was my first one of my first jobs there. Yeah. But, where was uh, that? Where was that? Like, where did you go to work? That every day? was uh, 900 Minnesota. That was okay. The, uh, that was the address. So it was at the uh, bottom the, of Petrero. Petrero Hill. Yeah. Okay. Which okay. Uh, which I loved. Yeah. Beautiful corporate office. Now it's condos, right. <laughs> like everything else, yeah, right? Yeah, right? But uh, but no, it was a beautiful office, and 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 I worked there from, gee, from when I was kind of right out of high school until I left college and um, and even after that. So I took some time off um, from continuing my education after high school and kind of partied and did the whole club thing here in San Francisco. Got it out of your system or? I did. I got it okay. out of my system. Yeah. Well, no, because it's yeah. like, you know. Yeah, people frown upon things like that, and I'm like, yeah, but if I didn't do it then, I might be doing it now, and that would not be good for anyone. Yeah, so I, right? you know, I had my party days, I guess, early, right? right? And and um, and then you went back to college, or and then I went back to college. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, take I did. That. <laughs> like, you know, I I went to I went back to college about three or four times. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put it that nice. way. Right. Nice. Yeah, and um, and yeah, finished up at USF. Okay. And then after that, like, did it did it ever cross your mind 
to leave San Francisco? Several times, several times I got offers to, to move to New York City, and in, in which I probably, I don't know. I mean, I, I you know, woulda, shoulda, coulda. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Kind of thought about it, never, never seriously considered it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I got those offers when I worked in apparel, okay, in fashion and apparel, um, and uh, and just never did. No. So I, I worked in I worked at Esprit and then I, I worked at um, Dryer's Grand Ice Cream for a little bit oh, yeah. and then I worked at Levi Strauss for a long time mm -hmm. uh, for about a decade. So, oh wow! So and there were opportunities there to you know move over to New York as well. There, and I got a job offer from um, of all of all companies, Rockaware. Um, and I and I interviewed. I with, don't know with, Rockaware. With, with Damon, the, you know, back in the day, big streetwear brand. Okay. Um, kind of like rock, like kind of like Fubu. Okay. Um, but it was Damon Dash. who was they. Damon Dash was a good friend of um, of Jay Z's, and, and okay. so that was his claim to fame. And he kind of started with an apparel brand, and then he launched a couple other products as well. Like I think, uh, I think he did vodka, like everyone does vodka, <laughs> right? Right. And. Uh, and he did a like a movie production company for a little bit. I don't know where he is now, but it was it was definitely in one of the most interesting job interviews I've ever had in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so how do we get from you said de you, a decade at Levi's? At, at Levi's Trust. So, it's like all this work in apparel, and then how do we get to? Yeah. So where you know, we it, well, how do we how do we get to this to this? And anything Business. in between that's um, worth sharing. <laughs> so you know, I, I would say after about a decade in in the corporate world, I needed a break. Um, yeah. And in the back of my head, for the like going on 15, 20 years, I thought, God, you know, one of these days I'm gonna I'm gonna open my own bar. And this stemmed from a conversation that my father and I had when I was. Fairly young, um, so as you can tell, my father had a very big influence on my life. Mm -hmm. He um, he and I were walking downtown around the old Emporium, mm -hmm. which is now San Francisco Center. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, and he worked kind of downtown in the financial district, and he worked in the graveyard shift. and And I think he and his his colleagues would go out and and you know get lit at, at yeah. some of the the area you know neighborhood bars down there do you, you know, know names of any of the places they went you know, that'd be cool then. I, i'm i'm not i'm not positive so this was back when when he was doing that it was probably back in the 70s yeah uh and you know they would frequent downtown in chinatown mm -hmm. and you know I, I you know i'm sure like lipo was was one of them yeah. i'm sure that um that Mr. Bing's was mm -hmm. one of them, which which is interesting because I was I was in the market for Mr. Bing's before they uh, they they sold the um, old Mr. Bing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but anyways, and 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 perhaps those other kind of bars that we know of that are kind of mm, you know <laughs> yeah. yeah I yeah well, I'll just reserve my comments but um, sure but uh, but yeah so we. And we were walking by one of those bars, and he said, you know, if you ever want to open a business in the future, a bar is a great business to open. And, and, I, and I asked him why, and he was like, you know, look, look in there. You know, so how much do you think that, that beer cost that that person's drinking? And I thought, well, I don't know. Uh, 20, I think I think a soda was like thirty five cents at the time or something. So I'm like I don't know fifty cents. And and and, and, and he and I think what he said at the time was like a, a buck twenty five. And I'm like no way. That's crazy. That's talk. nuts because you could you could buy a six pack of Oli, which is what he drank, Olympia. Yep. For you know it's back the then water. like the two bucks or something or or it, it or I don't even know if it was that. Mm -hmm. And so I thought he was lying to me, mm -hmm. and he said, "No, that's that's how much it is." And he said, "How much do you think that cocktail 
is that that other drink that that person's drinking. The fancy one. Yeah, the fancy. You know, I have no idea at this point. And, and, you know, he said something like 25 or... And I was like, that's crazy. Why would people do this? Mm -hmm. And his thing was, you know, people, people always want to drink with someone else. Right, they they don't want to drink alone. They they'll eat alone. They'll they'll and they'll eat at home, but people want to go out and, and drink and have conversation and be part of you know community, and yeah. you know a bar will always do well regardless of how the economy is doing. Mm-hmm. And I can't say that I really thought about what he was saying like constantly, but. I guess it's stuck in my head because it's in the hard drive, right? Yeah, for yeah, future, right. yeah, yeah. And so you know, as I came of age and and you know hit the clubs in San Francisco and 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 then got tired of that and just started going to bars. Um, yeah, it did. It it came back to me, and I thought, huh, it, this is true what he said, and this is cool, and particularly at. You know, neighborhood bars or bars that have you know, you know a good group of regulars, you do feel that sense of community and belonging, and it's a special place. That was John Ordonia of Many Bar. Part two with John drops this Thursday. Until then. Music for Storied San Francisco was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Michelle Kilfeather does original photography for us. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fifth season, we have more than 200 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're able to, please rate and review the show. And drop us a line at storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, weird, and healthy. And we'll see you next time on Storied San Francisco. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.fm, best frequencies forever.